Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How. And today we're actually on episode 39 and it's a continuation of last week's episode. And this was in direct response to several questions from the same question from several entrepreneurs. And it's this point where when you have your brand identity done, it's actually when you dig deep enough and actually uncover your brand and when you it's a true representation for you, there is a common occurrence where you just get scared and you just go, oh, wow, this is just really close to the bone and I'm actually really showing myself here. And can I do that? And am I good enough? Where in fact, you obviously are good enough because it's actually who you are. So it's just that moment. And I think I referred to it last week and I like to refer to it like this. It's that moment when you touched your own brilliance because your brand is finally a true representation of who you are. You've come out of hiding and you've decided to declare, well, this is me. This is what I'm here to do in the world. This is who I'm meant to serve. And this is how I'm gonna do it, okay? This is the moment of panic. <laughs> and we talked about that last week. And the reason we spent the whole episode talking about that last week was because it is so uh, important to acknowledge that this is deep work that's being done here. Uh, and this is deep work that you'll be happy you did. This I also promise you. And it's this step where I ask people to pause and reflect and acknowledge and celebrate what has been accomplished. And what has been accomplished is this embracing of who you fully and truly are. So we want to stay in the zone now. So this is why we have episode, in this episode, it's kind of part two of this question. And it's this idea of staying in that zone of your own brilliance, of remembering and calling to mind that, yes, I'm in the right place. I don't need to be scared. And I'm a little scared because I'm about to bring myself closer to realizing my dream. But there's no need to be scared. I just need to step more fully and more truly into it. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about staying in the zone. And this is something that I feel really passionate about. It's something that I've seen uh, many of the clients I've worked with over years and many of the the heroes that you have in business, if you looked into their lifestyles and how they look at things, you'll see that they all have a daily practice, a ritual of how they keep their body, mind and spirit together in a positive way that brings everything they want to them. OK, so let's talk about building a daily practice. OK, with that. So. Here's something that I say to people on all the programs and it's actually even on one of the worksheets and I'm going to read it to you because I mean, I could just say it to you, but I want to read it to you because this is how I say it. OK, so it's the greatest struggle you face is not with the marketplace. It's with the relationship between yourself and your dream. I'm going to say it again. The greatest struggle you face is not with the marketplace. It's with the relationship between yourself and your dream. And what I want you to do is guard that relationship and hold it close to you. And that's what this episode is about. OK, and it's why it's why I built so much kind of self-awareness pieces and self-care pieces into the Get Strategic program, because this is the thing that will make the difference. We want to take a connected approach to all of our marketing and growth and business development, but we also want to bring in and integrate our own selves into this process too, because it is us who have to carry out the dream, have to manifest the dream, who have to make it real. OK, so and some of the things that I would say to people on the program, it'd be and it's this acknowledgement of. You set the pace, it's your business, you get to choose, you get to choose customers that fit, you get to decide that your rules for how you do business and how you want to do business. Now, the market obviously will also decide if it accepts your rules, but you get to choose. And we must not forget that. Too often there's this, and I mean, I have a very strong opinion about uh, how most entrepreneurs and most businesses don't know the customers well enough. But the first customer is you. You must, we start with purpose, we start with passion. And then we move to customers and we decide how best to serve customers. But you are one of the most important people in this process because it's your business. So we must acknowledge that. 
and it is it is an even it is a relationship between you and your customer and you are not less than your customer you have the right to choose your business how you work who you choose to work with as much as the customer also makes that choice the customer also chooses whether they want to work with you but you get to choose whether you want to work with them okay so let's be really really clear on that it's one of the most powerful parts of the entrepreneurial journey which is the right to choose the freedom to choose and also what's very interesting is this is obviously happening in the employment stakes as well employees are also getting to choose whether they wish to work with a company who shares the values that they have who will fill, fulfill their needs and vice versa so what i'm saying here applies not only to entrepreneurs but it actually applies to you in the workplace if you are in the workplace watching this show so here are some of the things that we say also bring consciousness to every choice that you make you can bring consciousness you can consciously choose to do this product provide this service to this customer in this way and all of these things you get to choose okay big important thing and when you get to choose you also and this is an important part of the daily practice thing that i want to bring to your attention you also get to choose how to work you get to choose how you live your day and the powerful piece about you getting to choose how you bring yourself to your day is you get to listen to yourself to see when am i at my optimum what do i need to do to be my best in all my my uh, relationships my activities how do i prepare myself to be at my optimum when i need time to reflect to be at my optimum when i'm perhaps researching innovating creating and also how can i set myself up so that i'm at my best when i do a video i'm at my best when i meet my team i'm at my best when i meet my customers and my prospective customers and this is why we talk about consciousness so much so that we can bring this part and integrate this part into our work and ultimately into our lives because work is only part of our lives it's not all of our lives so and this when you are in your optimum state of mind for all of these situations and and the reason i bring this up is because i don't want you to fall into the trap of conformity for conformity's state sake sake and me and what i mean by this is it's not that you have to do something at 8 30 in the morning at nine o'clock in the morning and sign off at five o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night or be a workaholic that is not a foregone conclusion for entrepreneurship it's not even sustainable and nor does it bring you success success will come when you are at your best at each point you will be much more productive when you have fully integrated your body mind and your spirit to all parts of your life because we have lives outside of our work okay so have that in mind so i also kind of want you to think about cultivating this piece because often when we're in work mode we if you are in the knowledge industry uh, you will work from the neck up if you are in something that's physical, you may not engage your brain. Uh, so it depends on the type of work that you do and the type of business that you have. So this is the point where we start to integrate how we think about things, our mental fitness, our physical fitness, and all of how these things contribute to your success. And this is what I'm choosing to listen into what your mind needs, what your spirit needs, and what your body needs. And that is the core part of this conversation today. So as an exercise, I want to suggest this to you. And it's this idea of building this daily practice. And what I would like you to do, and you can actually DM me if you wish and ask for this worksheet because it's part of the Get Strategic program. And it is called 8.1, You Are Your First Touch Point. I'll say that again because I said it funny that time. 8.1 you are your first touch point okay because you have to be steadying yourself first so dm me if you want to get the um, worksheet 
And other than that, get a piece of paper <laughs> and do three columns going across and split the page into three as well. And going across, what I want you to write is the time, the ritual, and the third piece is why this step. And then as you split it into three, split it into morning ritual, afternoon ritual, and evening ritual. Because self-care is not something that you allocate to just the morning time or the evening time. We must take care and have these rituals throughout the course of the day to help us be at our best at each point and listen to our body, mind and spirit at each point. So in that, take a moment and I'm going to give you some prompts in a second, but I want you to take a moment and like write in in your morning ritual, what time you get up at and um, different things that you factor into your day. Now, each of your days might be the same and each of your days might be different. Usually they're a little bit different because we make choices around, you know, certain days you might decide it'll be a batch day, another day for social media or for podcasting or whatever you're doing. Other days might be client focused days. Another day might be just a day for you to write, to blog, to do those kinds of things. OK, so each you need one of these sheets for each day. But on the whole, you'll get a spine of a daily ritual. And what I want you to do is in each of these pieces, I want you to put three self care pieces in each of these parts of your day. OK, and I'm going to give you some suggestions on what they are. I have to turn over my page here because I can't remember all of these things. These are suggestions, you'll have your own. So, three of these in your morning time, three years, three of these in the afternoon time, and three of these in the evening time. So, and these are choices, remember, it's always about choice. You have to choose three of these, okay? First option for you, these are your uh, shopping list of self-care activities, okay? So you can choose to breathe. Great exercises, breathing, putting the breath throughout your body so that you can heal your body, help it move better. You're also healing your mind, your focus, taking and relaxing. And it's a very simple thing. It also, if you're in high anxiety, it'll lower your anxiety levels. So choose to breathe. That's one option. Choose to move. It's really important to move throughout the course of the day. Really important. And movement can be, you know, you might do a sun salutation, you might go for a walk, you might be like me, you go for a swim, you might do many things. Choose to move and then find out exactly what way you're going to move at each point. Choose to meditate. Powerful. I really advocate a daily meditation practice. It again calms the mind, makes sure you don't get triggered by things that don't matter um, and builds your positivity, your mental strength in every day and you start to see things much more as being possible so it's really good to do this as part of your daily practice choose to journal and reflect i love this it's where i'm able to log how i'm feeling about things and map what's happening as it's going and as i write and i really do advocate free writing here as you write things emerge and things get resolved it's very powerful uh, you can do it in that way or you can use it as a gratitude practice, which is to really acknowledge what there is to celebrate in the world because positivity creates success. OK, um, and it's also a reflection piece. Choose gratitude. Yeah, that's a separate option as well. Choose gratitude, you know, grateful for what has happened, grateful for your family, grateful for the sea I am every morning, grateful for the cups of tea I have with people I swim with when it's really, really cold. Grateful for a hot water bottle. You know what I mean? It's that these simple things. Grateful for a wonderful testimonial you received today from a client. What are the things that you're grateful for? Every day, like every day. And these just take a minute, three minutes, as long as it takes, you know. But it's really good and powerful to actually have this reflection time. Choose to rest. There's no rule that doesn't say, that says you don't need to, you don't, you're, not, you're not allowed to rest. You're allowed to rest. Rest when you're tired, eat when you're hungry, sleep when, you know, it's all that good stuff. So you can choose at each point in the day to have a rest period, okay? Choose to play, important. We are creatures that like to interact with each other. We need to laugh, we need to have fun. This sustains us. Choose to have time to play. All work and no play, you know? 
choose to listen in silence. You can combine this with a walk to just listen in silence. Everything doesn't have to be highly productive. Silence is productive. You don't have to listen to a podcast when you're out walking to get your movement piece done. You can choose to listen to the birds. You can choose to listen to your own voice. It's a really important part of this program as well that I say all the time. It is about tuning into who you are, uncovering your brand, your identity. So you really bed in who you are and actually live up to all you can be as a result. Choose to drink lots of water. Choose to eat. You need to eat to keep yourself sustained throughout the course of the day. And also that and what you choose to eat. Choosing to eat to give your body energy and sustenance in what it needs. And you'll know best how to do that. And if you need help, seek help on that. OK, I know I did. OK, so put three of those in each part of your day. And I would do those first before I put anything else into my ritual, into my daily practice. After that, I put in the blocks of time I have. So, for example, it might be I have three hours here that I will work or I have two hours here that I will work on a project or I will perhaps do some batching or I will record something or do interviews. So I will also put into my daily practice because it actually gives me joy and safety and uh, makes me feel comfortable knowing that I have this balanced approach, that I have created space for my work, for my self-care, my self-awareness piece throughout the course of the day. It makes it flow better. It's not exhausting because you're conscious of how you feel at each point. And I would advocate for you is play with this a little. When you get tired, figure out, is it that you need rest or is it that you need to get some fresh air? And choose this way of working and this conscious approach to how you approach every single day to give you a better life that you get to choose as an entrepreneur. Really powerful. Um, and last week, I'm sorry, next week, we're going to, so that's kind of part two, it's about staying in the zone, but kind of making every part of your day the zone because you're so connected to yourself and to your beautiful business that you're building. Um, Next week, we'll talk about launching that beautiful brand of yours and that new identity because you're ready for it and you're ready for the next stage. So this has been episode 39. I've really liked this one today. I feel very chilled now. So um, have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care. See you next week.